Hi, I'm Rick Cram. In just a moment, we're going to get underway with part one of eight live events. These are on Zoom and being broadcast live on YouTube to talk about how to plan to be your best as you navigate pain. Uh, my name is Rick Cram and I have a background um, that uh, gives me some experience to talk about this subject with some uh, practical uh, experience with over 40 years of uh, pain management. A no solace for me, uh, this is not about me, but it is about us. This is about us since we're on a journey. Perhaps you're here because you or someone you know is experiencing a lot of pain. They might be overwhelmed from burnout. It might be physical pain, it might be emotional pain. But if so, you're on a journey just like I am on a journey as well. And this is all about being on a journey together. Let me explain. Uh, plan to be your best as you navigate pain is about how to lead yourself and others with a particular focus, especially for these eight, these first eight meetings on this, is to look at how do we focus on the two things that pain or being overwhelmed, burned out, a lot of stress, the two things that they detract or prohibit us or frustrate our ability to do is um, has to do with two things, energy. It zaps energy. Anything that's overwhelming is exhausting, and I'll explain why. The second is that it detracts from our ability to focus in very practical and productive ways. So this is to perhaps to put it one way, a journey about not only just looking at some practical proven and positive ways to navigate pain and to persevere and for us to encourage and support each other, uh, to, to remind each other that uh, you are not going alone. I'm not going in alone. And we'll take a look at how do we create these shifts? What, what works for you? What works for me? And I'll share with you what's worked for me for over 40 years, and especially in these last few years, which have been especially challenging, just very briefly, after a football injury with about uh, one or two minutes to go in the last football game I was ever going to play, I took a hard tackle. I was flipped around as I was running the ball, and um, my knee was whiplashed into the ground. Through the course of the first uh, two and a half, three years, I had three of my first seven surgeries. Then I had three more um, in my late 30s around uh, 1997 through 2000, and surgery number seven was in uh, two, late uh, 2019, which solved some problems. It was a partial revision of the total knee replacement I had about 20 years before, but it, after all the seven surgeries, 13 incisions, all that the knee has been through, it was left while with some things have been fixed with the pain that I was having because part of the knee replacement had deteriorated, but it caused new ones, mostly neurological. I've got a buildup of scar tissue, which, which causes problems, but uh, on an average day I get, and this is no solace for me, but just so that you see where I'm coming from, I get about uh, some dozens of shots of pain that uh, do two things. One is it's instant agony, but it's a challenge. And if you will, it's my cue to make sure I'm doing what I can to pivot, to create these shifts that makes it possible to replace the energy that it, that it exhausts, that the pain exhausts, to put my focus on something positive uh, as opposed to the negativity and the frustration and the stress of the pain. So, to, part, to a great extent, part of what we'll focus on during the course of this hour together, or, or maybe it's going to be half an hour, it depends on the questions that, that you send me that, that come in and I invite you to use the, uh, if you're with me on Zoom, use the chat tool, or if you uh, want, you can send an email to me. I'll be tracking my emails during the course of this. You can send it to events at rickcram.com. That's events, E-V-E-N-T-S at R-I-C-K-C-R-A-M dot com. Now, 
we might be together for half an hour or if the questions that come in go for a full hour, uh, that's perfectly fine. This is all about making, making this journey together supportive, positive, and productive. I must say, one of the reasons why I'm doing this is that I'm focusing on um, my list during the course of these eight meetings. Uh, what I've got over 24 different things that I've got on my list. Most of them work. Sometimes some of them don't, but I do give them a try. These are things that I are my go-to list of items to create that shift of energy, to create that trade of negative thought for a positive thought, to trade a, a focus on that's distracted from what I'm trying to work on, persevering and being productive, to keep my productivity uh, as strong as possible, even though this is very exhausting. Um, also to, to uh, practice, uh, and this is key, it, it's a matter of practice I've found over the course of dealing with pain for over 40 years, pretty much on a daily basis, especially in these last three plus years, that um, the repetition of trying uh, and retrying what I found works, even though it might not in the moment, to try it again, try it again, to create that shift of energy and focus so that I am basically being my best at persevering. Um, and one of the things that I invite you to see, uh, and I invite you to even try to match my effort, uh, even test me on this. With anything that I say that might sound negative, that might sound like it's emphasis, and the emphasis is on what's hard about this. My, I'm in, intentional about trying to find ways to take that negativity and trade it or turn it positive before I completely leave the thought. The more I find that my mind hears my own positivity after the negativity, I'm better for it. It helps prevent me from sliding down into what I call the pit. They have that place of low feelings, low emotions, low thoughts, being overwhelmed, uh, sometimes it's real depression. And what I generally have experienced is, I'd say, episodic depression, uh, especially if I have numerous shots of pain in a short period of time. The overwhelmingness of it will bring, get me low. And sometimes it might take a matter of minutes. Sometimes it might take hours or a few days to actually get out of the pit through doing these, one of these 24 or more different things. And I'll share them with you. What we're going to mainly focus on today is the very first strategy. There are eight of them in Plan to Be Your Best as You Navigate Pain. And as you see there, it's all about how to lead yourself because you, you, you are a leader. Let me just say that. Okay? You're leading yourself through everything that you do. So you, if you don't think of yourself and being a leader as maybe your, your title or your role, you are a leader. You're leading yourself. And and both directly and indirectly, you lead others. You set examples for others. If you're, for example, in pain, others are watching you. Uh, some of them might, may have one of 101 different reactions to your pain. Everything from being very compassionate and understanding and really coming to you. Others will recoil. And pain is really hard sometimes, especially if they don't know how to, how to respond to it. So the way people see you navigating your challenge uh, is, is what this is all about. So we're going to, uh, we're, again, just to, if you're joining me now, I'm Rick Cram. Uh, plan to be your best as you navigate pain. It is a, an extension of what I do professionally with change leadership and communication strategies, decision-making strategies, plan to be your best as you navigate change. And let me just uh, touch base uh, with my email to see if any uh, questions are, are coming through. I, I welcome your, your questions. I welcome your concerns. And one of the things that I'll do for, for starters, and let me put this in the chat tool. There are two things I'm going to share with you. First of all, it's incumbent upon me to include um, and for you to know uh, the a, pro, a copyright in healthcare uh, disclaimer. I am not a doctor, uh, but what I bring uh, today uh, and bring to you 
anytime we get together are, let's say, three things. One, not only over 40 years of experience with uh, pain management after having seven knee surgeries, uh, 13 incisions, and seeking to be my best you know, through it all. But I've been, I've been privileged to consult with well over well, hundreds of, of business leaders, maybe thousands, actually. Um, I've also been a trained facilitator and caregiver of people who are in personal and professional crisis, uh, working one-on-one -on -one with them or in small groups. And, uh, and I bring all of that expertise uh, together. You'll find that the, when we take a look in just a moment at the eight strategies, there, they are leadership and planning strategies. Each one of these applies to whatever kind of change or challenge that you're experiencing, whether it be professional or personal, whether it's, it has to do with uh, the, the teamwork that you're doing with your colleagues. Maybe it's with your, your family or friends and some kind of uh, uh, civic work that you're doing. If you're experiencing change and challenges, whatever the nature, these eight apply. And they're based on my uh, both studying what has worked for companies, large and small, that I've had the opportunity to work with over the course of the past 30 plus years, um, whether it's helping a bank turn around, helping a hospital turn around, helping a, a juice company um, enter a new market and that's extremely competitive and then find ways to succeed in that. Companies have come to me um, um, that have said, we are experiencing challenges that we've never had before. Again, fi uh, financial services, healthcare, and many others, and uh, technology. And, and it's all about being strategic, being intentional, and it's about um, new applying new disciplines and new skills that, that do work. And in the course of studying what has and what hasn't worked, um, I've started applying these and testing each of the strategies that I've shared with you. They, they, they work for teams, they work for individuals, they work for entire organizations, especially when change and challenges are special, particularly overwhelming. If there's a lot of background noise you're, you're hearing, it's because there's some uh, ground crews outside clearing away some snow. It's uh, here we are on this 23rd of February in 2023 uh, in New England. I'm in the Metro Boston, Massachusetts area. And uh, you might hear some clanging around going on of, of uh, uh, the, the, the crews clearing the snow. But let me share with you as we get into this, um, let me just bring this up. Instead of sharing my screen, what I'm going to try to do is have you take a look at uh, two, two things. One is take briefly take a look at all eight strategies. Today, we're going to focus on the prepare strategy right there. Each one of these is designed to help facilitate the, the development of a plan, whatever kind of planner you are. Maybe you like to think about some, some ideas, make decisions, and then move on them and just move forward and apply them. Uh, you might also be, uh, or otherwise be someone who loves to write things down. And if so, I've got a document for you that you can download for free and take a look at uh, a certain exercise that's part of the prepare strategy. Uh, and, and it will give you an example, give you a taste of what it's like to actually go through uh, each strategy and learn new skills, learn uh, new disciplines that help not only build a plan, but puts together the pieces of a puzzle so that you can truly lead yourself and others, no matter how tough things get. What we'll do at the same time, before we get into the prepare strategy, I want to invite you to consider and think about what you're going through, what your situation is, and about these different aspects of you and your life, your, your mind, your intellectual side, or your emotions, your physical state, your spiritual situation, your social and, uh, situation, financial, environmental, and occupation. The reason I share this at the outset, and I'll bring this up from time to time 
during the course of these eight meetings is that it's worthwhile taking a look at each one of these because pain or exceptional stress, chronic stress, however you might be outside of your comfort zone, it hinders, it inhibits our ability to be our best in each one of these different areas of our, of our life day to day. It, again, if we take a look at how the pain, pain for example, is, is a shock to both our focus and our energy, you can actually take a look and see how these are, how that's being affected in your social life, in your, um, your professional life, in your occupation. And again, it's about trading, taking what is hard, what's negative, and turning it for good, turning it for positive, shifting from negative thought to positive thoughts, uh, shifting from the exhaustion to ways of creating new fuel, new energy to be able to thrive and be your best. So one of the things, let me just, before I get, uh, get into that prepare strategy, is to share this question with you. Think about it. Make a list in your mind or write it down, if you will, of those, those things that are symptoms of how your pain, your stress, your fatigue is being, is frustrating you from being your best. Think about uh, your emotions, for example. Are you frustrated? Are, are, are you angry? Um, are you, what, what, what feelings might you have that involve fear? For example, um, I don't like pain, uh, <laughs> which is, um, is it's kind of a stupid comment, but it's, it's, uh, nobody does, but I don't fear. Uh, I, what I do fear is, and, I'll wa and watch how I choose my words carefully, being a communications professional, words matter so much to me. Uh, and you'll find me sometimes hesitating to, to make sure I'm using words and thoughts that are positive and not negative. For example, uh, you may have seen a video uh, from me recently talking about the word suffer. I, I, I took the word suffer out of my vocabulary because I saw in that word a negative connotation. And this is maybe even one way to focus, uh, start to get into that prepared strategy. Be prepared to be so intentional that you're thinking about the words. Instead of saying, or even thinking the word suffer, I will turn that and even try to avoid that and use words that while I will think it's worthwhile to um, validate what I'm experiencing, I think it's actually essential to validate what we're experiencing. The idea of, of the suffer though, me, there's a connotation of as if we're going to stay there. If I'm suffering something, so I, I'm in that. Uh, I was like, I'm wearing a coat and it says across the, the chest, sufferer. I, I don't want to think in terms of suffering. I want to think in terms of acknowledging there, this is what I'm experiencing, but here's what I'm going to do about it, about moving forward. It, it's good to validate, but it's more important to think about the next steps, the next thoughts, the next actions to move forward beyond it. This is part of what it takes to uh, thrive and to persevere. It, when we think about being prepared, part of it means to be, to, to choose, choose right now to be more intentional than you ever have before. So let me bring up this uh, graphic of the eight plan to be your best strategies and just take a, put our focus on that prepare strategy, that prepare word. As you think about the different ways that you see symptoms of the, whatever is overwhelming to you, uh, whether it is uh, pain or stress, uh, how does that, how do, how do you see that? Is, are you experiencing frustration? Are you finding that you don't have the energy to get all, all the work done? Are you finding that the teamwork, if you're with a team at work, or even with family and friends, are you finding that the communication is, is, is not there? Are you finding that you're withdrawing and becoming disengaged because that you've got so much to deal with? Well, to be sure, these are challenging times. Uh, consider this, just on the idea of being stressed, seven out of 10, according to, I think it's the, the American uh, Stress Association, 
Um, seven out of 10 are so stressed that it's affecting their physical and mental health. About half of Americans go to see a doctor each quarter because of physical pain. And I saw something, I think it was in the New York Times, about rather two, two out of 10 or three out of 10 are experiencing chronic pain. That means pain every day or almost every day. It's, on, it's ongoing. There isn't permanent relief. There isn't um, a vacation from it. Uh, if there is, it's not for long. That means some days are, I think it can be um, navigable. Other days can be so overwhelming. It can be so difficult to get anything done. Being prepared means taking a look for starters at our, what are those symptoms? The one of the greatest and most challenging and most important symptom to acknowledge, to identify is this, that you've got a question about your sense of self. For example, uh, in work environments, this is not uncommon when someone's experiencing a, a significant crisis in their personal or professional life. I've heard, and I've heard this for decades, people say to me, even in groups that are very gener genuine and very honest, they'll raise their hand and say, I don't know who I am, and I don't know what to do about it. I've had clients say that, especially over the past few years, through the course of the COVID pandemic, with the tremendous disruption, the tremendous upset from people, people being able to do the things that they love to do and that shape who, who they are. This can happen even on an organization basis. There are companies that I've worked with that have said, we don't know who we are. Our, our customers, our prospects don't know who we are, or where we are, or how good we are. So there is this shake of identity. Uh, it happens with teams as well. But you might even think about if you're experiencing chronic pain, physical pain, or if you're overwhelmed and outside of your comfort zone in some shape or form, um, it's not uncommon at all to come to the realization that, that gee, I, I'm not sure who I am anymore. Another example of this, did you see the PBS documentary called Heal? And I just saw it a couple months ago. It's fascinating, really well done. If you haven't seen it, I recommend that you do. It looks at the both the physiology, the psychology, and different ways people are seeking to heal, particularly from trauma. Towards the end of the documentary, there's a woman who is in a, in a lot of pain. She's being cared for by a practitioner that's trying to help her release the trauma that she's got. And she, through her tears, says, I don't know who I'm going to be when I don't hurt anymore. Someone in a lot of pain, especially chronic pain, finds it, it's not uncommon to find yourself seeing this connection between your sense of self and the pain that you're experiencing every day. There was a time um, when I was going through surgeries four, five, and six. Um, number four was uh, an arthroscopic uh, surgery to see if I could, uh, they could clean up the knee and help me keep my original knee because here I am in my late thirties awfully young to have a total knee replacement, even though the x-rays and the general diagnosis was that would be the only solution. And it turned out to be that it was. Um, but the, and then I had surgery number five, which was also to clean it up again, clean up the knee and also see if I might qualify for a certain type of new surgery where uh, cortisol, uh, not cortisol, cardicel would be developed in a lab and then patch up uh, different parts of my, my knee so I could keep it. That I didn't qualify for that. They said I would have needed uh, more than two vials of it and they, and I wouldn't be able to use the leg uh, for uh, oh, uh, over two years uh, after the surgery. So that, that wasn't an option for me. But between all the pain I was experiencing and being asked by the doctors to wait a year before each next surgery, I found myself seeing this creep into my psyche. The idea of basically got expressed two ways. One, I am a person in pain. It became part of my identity. Secondly, 
someone pointed out, a pain manager that I was working with pointed out, you know, Rick, when you talk about your knee, you, you say the knee. There is this disconnect. I was backing away from even thinking that the, the, the knee, my knee was my own. And so I saw my, in myself and I began then to look for and watch for and I still do today because of the, the daily uh, chronic pain that I've gotten and the frustrations that I have from that and the strict limitations in terms of what I'm able to do, what I'm not able to do. There, I'm, I'm trying to guard against being have, seeing that creep of pain being part of who I am. Uh, because if I do that, that's going to be a further detract, detraction from my energy, positivity, and my ability to focus on what positive things I can do to prepare, uh, to, to, be, uh, to be my best in navigating pain. So when it comes to prepare, one of the things, one of the exercises that I work, um, sometimes it's groups, sometimes it's 500 people, sometimes it's 50, sometimes it's one-on-one, -on -one, is to ask that question. So who are you? And the way to do that is to answer one of the, or make a few lists. What about you is good? Make a list. And in fact, to that end, let me share this with you. Through the chat tool, you can, this is a free download. It's a worksheet where it's a Word document and you can just download it and write down your answers or your list to this. What about you is good? What about you is true? And what about you is unchangeable? And what's important about that is to take it and acknowledge that there are, even when there's so much challenge, maybe there's a lot of change going on. Um, maybe there's a frustration because there isn't enough change. It, it helps to anchor in what is unchangeable, what is lasting about you. Here's one other way to look at it. And you can download in, from the chat tool, if you see that, uh, the uh, and download, type, type uh, right into the, the document or print it out and work it over. And sometimes you might find that your answers might change or your list can, can grow the more you work on that, those three lists. What about you is true? What about you is good? And what about you is unchangeable? Uh, another way to think about it is to make a list of these three qualities. And for those of you who have a faith, this will sound familiar to you. What about you? What is, what is your way? What is your truth? And what about you brings light and life to others? That positivity. This gets to basically the heart of what it means to be your best. Let me offer this brief description of what it means to, to be your best. And I'm just going to glance to see at the emails coming in, any particular questions. I see one that I'll get to in just a minute. The, what it means to be your best. To be your best means this. It's your greatest strength in action. And let me explain. What's great about you are those things that are good for you, but also good for others, exceptional for others. I think that's a better word. It's exceptional for you and it's exceptional for others, which means if it's something that you do that's good for you and for others, that means there's this social aspect. There's this team aspect to it. The best of you is good for you and it's good for the people who mean the most to you, both in your professional life as well as your personal life. So that's your greatest aspect of this. But there's basically three parts to it. Great strengths in action. The strengths, those are things that you've worked on. These are skills. These are disciplines. These are things that are your way. This is what you do uh, well because of the work you've put into it and continue to put into it. Strengths are those things that are actually um, what, uh, let, me, let me put it this way. So strengths that um, are those things that you derive pleasure from. Um, and, and, you know, if you think about anything that you do really well, and when you do it, there's this sense of victory. There's, it's like, 
sometimes when I'm doing the, the things that are my, my greatest strengths and I'm seeing goodness come from it, it's like a, I just scored a touchdown. There's this elevation that comes from it. Uh, and so in action, greatest strengths in action. When it's in action, that's really the only time you or I can be our best. It's when we're actually doing it, when we're being that. So part of the prepare strategy is all about that, being your best. And, and I'll add to that in just a moment, your greatest strengths in action. If you've downloaded that, uh, that Word document and you're making your list of what is uh, good, true, and unchangeable about you, or what is your way? What is your truth? And how do you bring light and life to others? Those are things that you can, these are qualities and characteristics, undeniable. And they're, they're about how you're being your best. That uh, there's a benefit to foc focusing on that for two reasons. One, it reaffirms that you know who you are. Secondly, when you're making that list, you're starting to spend time with the best of yourself. When you're writing the words out or typing them out, when you're reading it yourself, I, I found that part of planning to be your best, whether you're navigating change or pain or whatever it is, that the more we actually make lists of those things that help build out our plan, help build out a vision for how to move forward and to achieve what we want to achieve, to to even leave behind the things that we want to shed so that we can be our best. The more we make those lists, the more we're actually spending time with the best of, best of ourselves. And what comes from that is new energy. It's a positive focus compared to focusing on what is overwhelming and what's hard, whether it's burned out, stress, or, or physical pain, or emotional pain. So think about uh, for a moment, what, what have you experienced in, in your past? What have you learned from that? The way you ended up persevering, the way you ended up, let's say, healing to whatever extent you may have been able to heal. Though that's, those, those are pieces of evidence that you can do this, that you're able to, um, and as part of the prepare strategy, that you can when you can uh, overcome what's overwhelming and keep on persevering. So let me just uh, take a look at this question before we'll continue with the uh, prepared strategy with a, another thought uh, for you on that. Um, I was, I'm being asked, what are some of those examples of things that I do that are on that list, uh, 24 different things? Um, and I'll, I'll share with you a, a, a few over the course of these eight meetings, I'm going to bring up a few. Some, and I'll include one or two that haven't worked for me. And this, this is to say it might not work for, uh, for you. It might very well work for you. Uh, the important thing I found is to make a list and keep trying different things to see what works. And there are three aspects to each one of the different things on my list of 24 items that create that shift. Uh, one is that it changes my state uh, emotionally. It changes my focus, my state uh, in terms of my mind. And there's also a physical component to it, sometimes very uh, quite directly, sometimes indirectly. Um, and here's what I'll, I'll do, share with you first. I give a voice. I'll gi I give a voice and care for myself just as I would care for somebody else, showing understanding, uh, compassion, and encouragement for someone else who might be experiencing the same thing, to basically do that for myself. Uh, I will acknowledge what my situation is. If I get a blast of pain that, and I double over and it can just take the wind out of me and I can recoil, I could easily slide down into the pit. I will sometimes, pause, take a couple of deep breaths, and just think about and, you know, caring for my knee, caring for my mind, caring for my emotions, caring for myself in every possible way, even uh, spiritually, and acknowledge what's going on, and then give myself that same understanding, compassion, and empathy I would give to somebody else. 
sometimes if you've ever found this to be the case where you're quicker to extend that care, that grace to somebody, than you are to give it to yourself. This is part of what it means to, um, uh, to be your best as you're navigating pain. A second thing that I'll do is actually, um, let me look at this one. All right, here's one, here's one of my favorites, um, is to actually find somebody, a friend, and we've all got a lot of friends and colleagues who are hurting, think again back to some of those statistics that I was sharing with you, that uh, seven out of 10 Americans are so stressed that it's negatively affecting their physical and mental health. The half of the adult population in America is experiencing pain so much so that they see a doctor each quarter because of it. Um, if you seek others, seek out others to care for them, give and extend to them, first and foremost, and I think these are the three qualities that anyone in pain needs most. It's understanding, it's compassion, and encouragement. And there's a neighbor of mine who was in a tremendous amount of physical pain for many years. And he said one time, you know, we're sitting down and talking, and I could see he was in uh, just a tremendous amount of pain. He says, Rick, all I need is for people to just understand. I don't need sympathy. I just need, need understanding there. So real truth to that. But it's a combination of understanding, compassion, and encouragement. And those three qualities, those three gifts, when you give them to somebody else, something magic happens. And it's called neuroplasticity. It flows right back to you. The time I spend caring for somebody else it actually lifts me up in the process. Uh, neuroplasticity is the, that f flexibility, the mind, the way our minds neurologically, they can actually, the neurological uh, scientists, the neurologists see this, that the, 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 it's remapping is the connections uh, and the flow of thoughts as electrical impulses so that the goodness that we share to somebody else ends up being goodness that flows right back to us and lifts up uh, ourselves. So try that. Uh, and another aspect to that is when you're caring for somebody else, you're not focused on yourself and then what is hard. Uh, you, the emotions that you're putting towards somebody else um, are, are positive and your mind is experiencing that positivity. So it makes it easier for you to, to do that uh, for yourself. You find that uplifting. Uh, and I will say uh, this, uh, journaling. I've got uh, a journal that is, after many years of thinking, oh, I'll start journaling, I'll start journaling. I finally got around to it, especially when I really needed to. Writing down my thoughts, it might be just a few words, and maybe I'll journal a few times a week. It's not something I, I do every day. Sometimes I'd be better off doing it just about every day. I think it helps. But uh, in writing in blue ink, I saw a study that showed how when we see our, ourselves writing with blue ink, our mind remembers it more than compared to if it's, it's black or green or red ink. So writing things down in blue ink on white paper, the, the exercise of pouring out in, in written word the thoughts, sometimes that, the storm of thoughts that are just going around, bouncing around the brain like ping pong balls, putting it down in writing starts to help add some structure to and some, some understanding and, and control over the thoughts. One of the things I find interesting is to, even if I pour out my, my thoughts and my feelings about how difficult pain is uh, and come back to it another time, I can find, often find myself thinking, oh, did I really think that? And sometimes it means I get a better understanding of myself. Sometimes I might say, you know, I, I want to think that through and that maybe I need to address that more. Maybe it's having something to do with the frustration. Uh, if, there, if there's anger in the, in the mix, it's worthwhile for me to spend some time caring for that and thinking, what, what, what am I really angry about? I'll, I'll share this with you. 
Um, I, I decided to play football and just making that decision ended up meaning it led to this life altering injury and um, basically most of my life dealing with intense physical pain. So I, I made that decision to play and I, may, I had found it worthwhile to think about how, to what extent do I feel, might I feel frustrated my, with myself, some sense of guilt or anger towards myself, thinking, is, is this my fault? And certainly it was an accident. And, and when I came to the realization that uh, it wasn't my fault, when I just sort of acknowledged what seemed to be obvious, there was a sense of freedom and, and uh, it released that. So it became, in all honesty, no longer an issue. The idea of planning to be your best includes this. And we'll talk about this in um, one, in actually a couple of the next meetings. Again, we're meeting every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern, just like this here and now. Um, and the idea of, of uh, asking yourself this question and that example of working through that question, do I feel guilty over playing football? Do I feel a sense of responsibility? Was this my fault? All this pain, was it my fault? It's something that I shed. And in effect, that's, that's one of the strategy questions in this plan to be your best as you navigate pain. What do you need to shed? So let me shift here and make a, this uh, concluding thought or two. Preparing is to be prepared. And maybe I shared this with you. There's that quote by Miguel de Cervantes, uh, the author of Don Quixote, Spanish novelist and poet as well. Uh, to be prepared is half the victory. When we prepare, we are making a commitment to understanding what good comes out of planning. We're making a commitment to acknowledging that when we seek to be our best and put that together with our planning, that we're setting the stage for being able to thrive, to create more of those shifts of energy and focus from the negative to the positive, from what is hard to what is going to help us move forward and thrive. This is not an easy journey that you're on. It's not an easy journey that I'm on, but I made a commitment. This is part of being prepared. Made a commitment to be my best, which includes sharing it with you, hopefully in a way that's going to encourage you and give you new ideas, new resources, ways to, to thrive and to persevere. Uh, for yourself and for the people who mean the most to you. I'll say this as one concluding thought. I'll check to see if there, there's another question that um, uh, might have come in on this. The idea of, um, of being prepared, um, it means understanding the value of planning, the value of uh, being your best, um, the, uh, and, and, and it's this. The, another aspect of it is who is going to journey this with you? Your journey of creating your plan, your journey of helping to reaffirm who you are, what your identity is moving forward, let the strength come from that, the energy and focus, the goodness that comes from that. But who's going to be part of this journey with you? To be sure, I invite you to journey this with me and let me journey this with you. But in your planning process, who in your life, your personal or professional life, might you partner with as you move forward with this journey to do some planning, to focus on being your best? They can play, whether it's one person, two, or maybe even half a dozen people. For, I've got several dear friends that I go to uh, on a regular basis to uh, both um, acknowledge what's going on, to, to support each other. But one of the things that they do for me is to help me stay on course uh, with my own planning to be my best, with 
often sometimes it's encouragement it's that understanding and compassion sometimes it's a specific thought um i'm i'm constantly staying open to new possibilities even though the doctors have said that nothing can be done i'm perpetually looking to make connections with more people that have the that might that have the ability to bring forward an idea a source for hope um a possible something that might be possible and these friends that I've got will bring, uh, will raise up, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? And well, sometimes, uh, most of the time, uh, it's the answer is yes, I've tried that, or the doctors say that won't work once in a while. And in fact, there's a new friend that I've got who has uh, raised up three possibilities that I didn't look at yet. Uh, even though my doctors say there's nothing that can be done, I, I, I thrive on knowing what uh, that that friend is, that new friend has shared with me and the possibility. So um, in, in conclusion, planning to be your best as you navigate pain is all about leading yourself and others. I hope these thoughts have been good for um, giving you something to think about, something to work through, thinking about who you are, your identity, as you prepare to continue to move forward and with creating a plan and uh, finding new ways of shoring up what it means to be your best and letting that help you thrive. But what's coming up next will be the listen strategy. That's next week, Thursday, and at one o'clock Eastern, we'll peel back the layers on that listen strategy. And there's a lot to talk about that. There's about, it's, it has to do with listening to your words, your thoughts, your emotions, um, as well as to listen to what others have to say. There's so much to be gained from that. And it's, a, it's the next logical step after being prepared is to listen. So much can, goodness can come from that. And I'll share with you more of both my story as well as more of those 24 different things uh, that uh, I do to create that shift for new energy and new focus. Oh, I had promised to share with you one thing that didn't work for me. And, and this is it, I'll, I'll conclude after this. I had read, uh, it was actually maybe a few months after surgery number seven, that some people were finding that they can walk out of the pain. I know what it's like to actually focus so hard on what is on, on saying no pain, no pain, and, and the pain dissipates. Um, uh, that's not working anymore. And this idea, though, of walking out of the pain, since our, our bodies were made to move, and it was the idea of walking out of the pain is based on the, the mind and even the body experience doing what it's made to do. It can be, and there are people who have been in very similar situations or even worse than mine, and they go for walks, the last thing that seemed physically possible. And they ended up getting to a point where they rebounded with both the strength and comfort to gain a new level of, of, uh, of harmony in their life and, and less pain. That didn't work for me. I tried that for several months and I would go for walks. Uh, even though it was painful, I would still do it. It wasn't hurting my, my knees structurally. It wasn't creating new problems, but it, it wasn't providing any benefits. I might try it again down the road, depending upon what else, uh, perhaps something else in tandem with it works, but that has worked for others. Give some thought as to what, what it might look like for you to either walk out of the pain, whether it's physical or emotional, do what your body is made to do. Let your mind see you doing what it's intended to do. There can be, it could possibly be a relief there. This is one I do want to remind you in the uh, chat tool, there's the link to my um, both the uh, um, copyright as well as the healthcare disclaimer. I'm not a doctor, but this is what some of these things that work for me and some things that haven't worked, but I know that have worked for others. But most of all, I want to thank you. Thank you for being with me for this past hour as we think about different ways to plan to be our best as we're navigating being outside of our comfort zone. I'll be back on next Thursday uh, at one o'clock Eastern. Again, go to rickcram.com to the blog and you'll see posts about 
uh, this series. This is the first of eight, so seven more to go. If you're on a journey where you're outside of your comfort zone because of a tremendous amount of uh, pain, whether it's emotional or physical, or perhaps you're burned out or greatly stressed, like so many people are, you're not alone, and I'm here to journey that with you, and I invite you to journey this with me as well. Thank you so much for being with me. I wish you well, and I uh, send you my best. Take good care.